The Stripe API is versioned, and you can think of your API version as a contract you have with the API. It defines how you call the API, what functionality you have access to, and what you're guaranteed to get back as part of the response. We version the Stripe API so that we can continue to release new features without breaking existing integrations or requiring developers to immediately upgrade. In this video, we're going to talk about how the Stripe API version is defined and how the API evolves. We'll look at how the API version is initially set on your account and what options you have for controlling the versions you use in your integration. We'll also look at webhooks and how those interact with API versions. The Stripe API version is denoted by the date that that version of the API was released. So for example, March 14th, 2019, or August 27th, 2020. Now as you're reading our docs or working on your integration, you may encounter other version references. These versions aren't Stripe API versions, and they're not something we're going to talk about during this video. But before we go any further, let's give them names so that we're all on the same page. Here are some of the types of versions we're not going to discuss today. The V1 you may see in the endpoint path. While this may change in the future, all of our endpoints currently have the same V1 reference. The version referenced in the Stripe.js path. At the time of this recording, the Stripe.js was on its third version. Lastly, all of our client libraries have their own versioning. The Stripe API evolves in two ways, backwards compatible changes and backwards incompatible changes. Backwards compatible changes are changes you can take advantage of regardless of what API version you're currently on. These might take the form of new properties on existing resources, and in some cases, new resources themselves. A good example of this would be the prices object that we rolled out earlier. Backwards incompatible changes often happen when we change, when we remove a property from a resource, we change the type of that property, or the behavior of that resource fundamentally changes. In these cases, you have to upgrade to that API version to take advantage of these changes. A good example of this would be a change we made in February of 2019, where we dramatically changed how the accounts API behaved in Connect. By default, all requests from your application will use the API version set on your account, unless you or the client library you're using overrides that. We recommend being explicit about what API version you're using. This will allow you to better understand how you might have to upgrade your integration as we release new API versions with new features. If you're using one of our libraries in a dynamically typed language, such as Ruby, PHP, Python, or Node, you can set the API version on a per request basis or globally. If you're using one of our libraries in a statically typed language, such as Java, Go, or .NET, the API version is pinned to the version of the client library that you're using. So let's take a look at API versioning when you're working with the Stripe.NET library. Now our .NET library is strongly typed and each version of the library is pinned to a specific API version. Let's start by printing out the API version we're using today. And we can do this by just printing out the, the API version constant in the library. And we'll go ahead and run this. And so you can see that our version of the library is using the API version from August 27th of 2020. So by default, webhook events are configured not by the library version, but by the API version that's set on your Stripe account. And in this example, my Stripe account is set to an API version from 2019. If we were to create a customer using this library, we'd create the customer using the 2020 API version, but the event data payload would be configured uh, based on that 2019 version. So let's do that now and let's compare the two responses we get from the customer create call and then uh, from the event that is generated.
We'll set up our, our customer service. And we'll create the customer. And then let's print out this customer, the response we get. And then before that, before we run this, let's also retrieve the customer created event um, that was generated. And we'll just get the last event. We'll write the, this out as well. Okay, let's give this a shot. All right, and if we scroll up to the top and take a look at the customer we created, we can see that here is the response from creating our customer, and we can see the whole response right here on my screen. It's nice and, um, and compact uh, and very easy to read. Now, this was actually a change that we made to the, uh, to the API in uh, 2020, and we decided to, um, to, by default, hide some information you might not need when you create a customer initially. So we can see the difference in the API responses by looking at the customer object that was generated using the API version on my account from 2019. And so if we take a look at this customer created event, you can see that the API version here for the event is that 2019 version. And then if we scroll down to the, um, to the customer object that was sent in the payload, we can see that the response looks a little different. So we have um, a sources hash we don't see in the 2020 version, as well as a subscriptions hash and a tax, IDs ha tax ID hash. Now, if your uh, Stripe account is not set to the API version that your .NET library is using, you're going to want to make sure that you configure a webhook endpoint with, that, um, with the library's API version so that that event data will be structured correctly for your library. So let's go ahead now and create a webhook endpoint that is using the 2020 API version. And then we'll create another customer and look at the event that's generated uh, and sent to that endpoint. So we'll go ahead and comment this out. We're not going to use it anymore. And let's uh, create a webhook endpoint. And while I am using the API to create this webhook, you can also do this um, through the dashboard and set the API version there. And I'll set the API version to be the API version my library is using. I'll set the URL. And lastly, I'm going to set this endpoint to just receive uh, customer created events. We do that by passing a list of the events we want to receive. OK, so those are our um, options to pass to the service. We'll make a call to uh, create using those options. And then let's print out um, the endpoint that's returned. And then lastly, let's create one more customer. And so now we'll that will trigger the customer created event. Um, and we can then go take a look at that in our dashboard. OK, let's try this out. OK, so here's this customer that, uh, that we created. And if we scroll. Up, we can also see the webhook endpoint we just generated. Uh, here it is, and here's the API version that it's set to receive. And so, events set to this events sent to this webhook will be configured using this API version. As a last step, let's go look at the customer created event we should have um, had generated from our call, and we'll take a look at that in our dashboard.
And so we're in the developer section of our dashboard here. We're going to click on webhooks. And here's the endpoint we just created. And if we click on that, we can see that um, the customer created event that was uh, that Stripe attempted to send to that endpoint. And if we open this up, we can look at the payload. And here we can see that this uh, webhook endpoint, or sorry, this webhook event was generated with the August 27th, 2020 API version. And if we look at um, the customer object that's in the data, data hash, uh, we can see it has that format of, um, of that uh, 2020 API version.